you flare and it's instantly like so many bowel movements per day, you don't know what to do with yourself. And so I was kind of like, why, why is it so bad with me? I was going to the toilet 30 times a day for the last two days before I was hospitalized. I live now without any part of my colon. I have a permanent ostomy bag. If it's liquid going into my bag, it hasn't even reached the colon yet, but it's in liquid form. How can, how can it get stuck in the colon if it's liquid going into my bag? It's been a while since I've addressed IBD on my channel. And so today I thought I would spend a little bit of time talking about what my diet looked like, typical foods and meals that I was consuming leading up until that point where I lost my entire colon back in 2017. So many of you will already know that I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis back in 2012. It's an inflammatory bowel disease. It's also classed as an autoimmune disease. And the take home message and advice that I got from my doctor was to increase fiber intake. So we're typically talking about whole grains and fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, all this stuff in a whole form. That way we're intaking more fiber and the fiber is supposedly gonna help mitigate our symptoms and we'll be on our way to fixing our gut. It's this cliche really in medical circles, nutrition circles, when you have gut issues, it's always fiber, high fiber, that's what's prescribed often. And um, this is what I bought at the time and being concerned about my diagnosis and my health, I listened to the, the advice that I got and I followed the instructions to consume more fibre. And so my breakfast would typically look like oatmeal, porridge oats, almond milk, goji berries, apples, bananas, seeds and nuts, and then some cinnamon, you know, stuff like that. That was a very typical breakfast. And sometimes I would switch things up. Sometimes it would just be goji berries and nuts and seeds. Other times it might be apple, banana and cinnamon. But I was always basing it around whole grains, pretty much every meal. Come lunchtime, it would be something like a whole grain sandwich or a seeded bread sandwich with salad fillings, you know, lettuce, tomato. There would often be things like tuna or chicken in there, some animal protein. And I've always believed in the importance of animal protein. But I would always make sure that there was plenty of fibre and whole plant foods in that meal. Come evening time, I would almost always base meals around whole grain pasta, brown rice and potatoes. Sometimes I would have a takeaway, but usually I was all about whole foods and eating clean. The more carbs I was eating, the less animal products I was consuming. And I wasn't eating like any fat really. You know, I was buying the 5% fat ground beef and then even get rid of all the rendered fat out of the pan. I never added animal fats to it, butter or anything like that. I was cooking in olive oil, putting some organic broccoli and peas and carrots and onions and things like that in there. And I really made a proper conscious effort. I did have a dessert every now and again, but Really, you know, if you looked at my diet in comparison to other people my age or my friends, even my family, my diet looked pretty clean and I believed that I was doing the right thing at the time. And so it's funny, I believed in it. I was taking it seriously. I'm now taking medication, which helped with the symptoms, of course, because that's what they address is the symptoms and not root cause. Anyway, these symptoms of mine, they, they just got worse and worse and worse. And every single time I flared, the flare up would last longer. It would be more intense, more blood heavier. Um, it would be difficult in some cases to kind of hold my toilet in. Um, it just got very, very difficult and I lost more confidence, you know, going out to work. Sometimes, you know, you, you flare and it's instantly like so many bowel movements per day, you don't know what to do with yourself. And so I was kind of like, why, why is it so bad with me? I watched YouTube videos, I looked at some studies and some articles, and if anything, they just affirmed that I was doing all of the right things, and so I was very confused. And I would actually live like this for the next three years, and it wasn't until one day in 2017 when I flared up for the last time, and a part of me knew it was the last time. It was so bad. It was like the first day was worse than any other day I'd known during any other flare-up that I'd had, and it was crazy. I knew that I was heading for dark times almost. Just The symptoms were overwhelming. I would be laying down on the couch at my parents' house. They were actually abroad at the time. And I remember taking these trips up the stairs to the toilet because they only had a toilet upstairs. And it was exhausting, you know. I was, I was going to the toilet 30 times a day for the last two days before I was hospitalized. Um, and again, I'm, I'm just thinking like, why is this so bad? I've done everything that they said I should do. And now I'm going to and from the toilet 30 times a day. And essentially what was happening is I was ridding the lining of my colon. I was on my way to perforation and to prevent that, obviously, they performed ileostomy surgery. And so I live now without any part of my colon. I have a permanent ostomy bag. Got home and I remember quite looking forward to eating some more normal foods again, things that I was craving. And so I went straight back to how I was eating before, really not thinking too deeply about, well, I did this and then I ended up in hospital. But 
anyway, I'm eating lasagna, I'm eating Mediterranean dishes, um, cereal and porridge oats and fruits and grains. I would snack often on almonds and things like this. But it was really, really interesting now because all of a sudden I don't have my colon. I have a bag, which is where the colon would begin. And there's a peep window and I empty it and I change it. And so I'm forced to look at the output, right? And all of a sudden I'm like, there's like a whole mushroom in my bag. Look at that. There's all those peas and carrots. For the first time in my life, I'm actually seeing with my own eyes the state that food's in as it would enter my colon where I had all that disease and inflammation. I remember having my Sunday roast with my parents. I'd often go back around there during a Sunday. It's a tradition over here to have a Sunday roast. And um, typically there's lots of vegetables on the plate. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, carrots, um, you know, you've got your parsnips and, and potatoes and things like that. But after the meal, I remember having such trouble processing the food, the food exiting my body into the bag because it would struggle because it just wasn't breaking down. I even consciously started to chew this stuff more and more. But as it would go into the bag, you could see colours and you could see shapes and there were all the broccoli florets and a big chunk of carrot. What I've realised, I started doing some experiments. However you finish chewing plant foods, and you swallow it, it does not change. It does not change until it gets to your colon. And then of course we reabsorb the water so it'd almost be like vacuum packing the vegetable, if you like, into your stool. You're not gonna see it, you're not gonna see the colours as much. The water's come out, but the skin will be there, the seeds will be there, the fibre is in there. When you eat fibre, it all ends up down the toilet because it's indigestible. This isn't an opinion of mine, though I have done experiments, you don't absorb that stuff. So it all ends up down the toilet. So I'm kind of thinking this isn't right, surely. How is this healthy? If I'm seeing plants that are indigested and just intact, large pieces as well, and I'm even chewing this stuff thoroughly, yet it's still there. I can see the colours, I can see the shapes, I can see bits of stalk, some of the florets, like half chewed nut and seed, and some of these little small seeds are in, intact, completely whole. They do not change. I've swallowed things like mushrooms, like large pieces of mushrooms and, and pineapple, and they do not change. So obviously it is important to chew thoroughly if you're going to eat plants, right? If you look at any herbivores, all they do all day long is chew. Um, but they've actually got massive cecums, massive colons, or they've got four chamber stomachs. They've got the enzymes and the organisms and the, the machinery to help break this down thoroughly. And we cannot, we do not have that machinery. Humans are far from herbivores. So when you have a gut issue, you don't want to be consuming things that you can't break down or digest. You don't want to be consuming the fibre, which all plants possess. So you think, well, if all plants possess this thing that's so inflammatory, then are plant foods good for us? I'm now developing a love-hate relationship with food because I can't stop getting hungry. Obviously, we need to eat. Um, but now every time I eat, I'm, I'm hating my experience with it and the digestion process. I was just overly aware of it all of the time, and that really, really got to me. And and so it was through being depressed that I found the carnivore diet via Michaela Peterson's anecdote. And I thought, well, what the hell have I got to lose? I try the carnivore diet and three weeks later, all my health issues, all of my symptoms were resolved in three weeks. Some of them much sooner. As a reflux went overnight, acne on my back went in roughly a week. I wasn't even burning in the sun anymore. And I wasn't even sweating much because all the toxins that I was consuming came from plants because that's where they come from. And I also remember feeling a bit concerned about the fact that I was basing it mostly around red meat, right? The carnivore diet, you base it around ruminant meat. And so I was thinking, well, okay, this is a bit sort of counterintuitive. If you look at the, the, the science and these studies and what my doctor's been telling me and all this kind of stuff, you think it's the opposite, it's the complete opposite. Anyway, I'm on this carnivore diet. I'm not even aware when it's entering the bag where all this indigestible plant food was a nightmare. It really was, but red meat is a breeze. So all this misinformation and disinformation around red meat, all the myths, it gets stuck in your colon, it causes bowel cancer, it's hard to digest. No way, false, 100%, I know for a fact, because I've done an experiment every single day for the last two years plus, over two years now, I've eaten red meat every single day, steaks every single day, and every single day I see the same thing in my bag, and it is a fluid. Once you consume red meat, in seconds it's in the stomach acid, our stomach acid is extremely low, 1.4 to 2 typically, around there, right? Very, very acidic. It breaks down meat, gristle, fat, to a liquid. It's digestible, it doesn't get stuck anywhere. How can it get stuck in your colon? 
if it's liquid going into my bag, it hasn't even reached the colon yet, but it's in liquid form. How can, how can it get stuck in the colon? So it was quite interesting to wind up with a bag because I had to almost wind up with a bag to actually know what to eat. And it's not like, oh, it works for you. I'm glad it works for you, but not all humans are supposed to do that. It's like, if you know about stable isotopes and the nitrogen-15 stable isotopes, this isn't just one test that they did from one part of the globe, from one bone. No, they've taken multiple large bones from around the world, taken the collagen out and run that collagen for stable isotopes. And the N15 indicates that humans are hyper carnivores. If you're suffering from IBD right now, and you're still consuming fiber, you're most likely not helping yourself because you won't fix your gut. You won't seal the gut. You have leaky gut because you have an autoimmune disease. And that's the very first thing that you want to address. I know this may sound quite extreme, but the best thing that you can do is to back off of the fibrous carbs and all plants. You want to basically transition very, very slowly into a carnivore diet. And then more specifically, a lion diet, a paleolithic ketogenic diet, which is Red meat only, salt to taste, water to thirst. When you're looking at your meal visually, there's one part fat, two parts protein. One of those parts protein consisting of organ meats. And the reason behind that is because it's such a high fat to protein diet, you're probably going to be lacking nutrients that you'd get in the muscle meat. Um, and so we, we compensate by making one of those parts organ meats. It's like your vitamin pill. Another very important thing is to fast. Um, you want to give your gut a rest. This is also why we're on a high fat line diet because you are going to be in ketosis, nutritional ketosis, and even low grade nutritional ketosis, even during and after your meal because the protein is low, the fat is high. And that way we're in this very therapeutic state where your body can really fix and mend and heal. Um, and once you've got this down for a little bit and you're, you're adjusted, then I would recommend you know fast for a day and then eat again. Um, for a week and then fast for two days and then eat again for another week and then fast for three days and, and try this and most likely you will be heading towards this state where you don't feel inflamed, you're not flaring up anymore and most likely you can come off medication down the line, you know, I can't say when, we're all different, we've all been at destroying our health from different angles for different periods of time. The reason why you want to transition very slowly is because your gut biome will be changing also and you don't want this to be rapid, you don't want this to be overnight. You, the, the bugs down there won't be happy about it, it's going to cause some issues. You'll get what's known as the keto flu. We are designed to eat red meat since the beginning of time human beings have eaten this stuff and based their diet around this stuff. It's where all the nutrients are, it's where many of the nutrients that we can't find in plant foods are, right? Um, just things that you won't get if you're eating lots of plants and obviously the more plants you're consuming, the less animal products you're consuming, so the less, less nutrients you're consuming. The more whole grains you consume, the more gluten you're consuming, the more you're damaging microvilli. Now you can't really even absorb as many nutrients because you're destroying microvilli. The fibre is blocking nutrients, it's causing gas, it's causing constipation. I would also encourage you to look at Paul Mason's video on fibre. You can see a, a high fibre, medium fibre, low fibre and a zero fibre diet. And it was only on the zero fiber diet, every single one of the patients had complete resolution of all gut related issues. And so fiber, not only is it not a nutrient, it's non essential, but it's highly inflammatory. And if you have IBD, you want to stay far away from that stuff. Please reach out to me if you have any concerns, send me an email, drop a message in the comments, I'll do my best to respond. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.